Coming up on 743, welcome back Wednesday morning on the BT Couch. Elizabeth May, leader of your Green Party in an 11-week election campaign. Yep. This is early for us for the 2015 edition of our, our election, but what would you say, given the more time you've had, the most valuable benefit to get a message out to engage a community has been? I think it's because the Greens, really, because we don't have big shocker to you to tell you we don't have the conservative uh, $50 million in the bank that we're going to roll out in horrible attack ads. We're a party that relies on our volunteers, on knocking on doors, on doing things. We do one of our great campaign things we love doing is to be on a street corner someplace and, and wave at the drivers going by, just say, hey, we're here. We're the Green Party. Here's your local candidate. So we do the things that are low cost and to rely on volunteer energy. So in that context, more time is better. Although for taxpayers, what Harper did by changing the Elections Act to allow him to have a longer election period and get more rebates from the taxpayers when it's over, this is going to cost all of us a lot of money. And I think Stephen Harper should be accountable for that. But for, for us as Greens, you know, we love talking to people. Well, you're, push, you're, you're pushing forward with a great message. Yeah. And I first want to get into the up for debate. I mean, this is an opportunity to talk about women's issues yes. that the NDP and the Conservatives decided they didn't want to be a part of. Uh, what are the key women's issues that you think need to be heard in this country now that this debate, organizers are saying, will not take place? Yes, it's a shame. By the way, the debate has 175 organizations that put together this effort. They've been working on it. I'm trying to remember the first time they came to see me about it, but it was it's, it's easily been since late last year. We committed to it. The NDP committed to it, and the Liberals and the Greens and the Bloc. And the only party that wasn't committed was the Conservatives. And then Tom Mulcair changed his mind. And as you say, one of the issues that are really important, we still don't have pay equity. Women in this country doing the same job as a man don't, don't get paid the same. We still have really profound issues for, and this is not just a woman's issue, but a parenting issue. Women and men as parents need to know that they've got reliable, high quality child care. Women's issues, women need to also confront the ongoing issues. First Nations women and the missing and murdered Aboriginal women is a huge issue. but. Violence and sexual violence and, and intimate partners, you know that most women, if they're assaulted, it's going to be from someone with whom they've been close. We need to talk about that as a society. Why do we still allow violence in, in our, and how do we deal with it? Because it's, it's one of the most difficult, emotional uh, issues to talk about. But we need to talk about violence against women, and we need to actually put forward the solutions that will make a huge difference. It's, it's about taking care of our little boys and our little girls, that they grow up knowing that they're loved and that they have empathy. Well, those are, those are not necessarily political questions. Those are society questions, and I think a debate on women's issues would bring a lot of those out. Even if it was just the Greens, the Liberals, and the Bloc Quebecois, I think this thing still needs to happen Me because too. of these very issues that you yeah. said. And I've seen Justin Trudeau speak out on Twitter saying he's up for it. So hopefully that happens. Yesterday you were here in our neck of the woods talking about housing. One of your quotes, housing is a human right. Yeah. When we look at affordable housing, is the focus and priority, should it be on affordable housing or the cause of poverty in, in, in the first place? Look, in the housing question, it's a continuum. It's everyone from someone living rough who needs a roof over their head. They may have mental health issues, they may have addiction issues, and that's housing first strategy needs full support and funding. But then you've also got the issues of affordability for people who are working. You've got money, you've got an income, but the cost of a house is simply out of reach. And talk about Vancouver, North Vancouver, Burnaby, housing prices are out of control. The average vacant, houses... Vacant property tax on this, because foreign ownership is big in our neck yeah. of the woods too. Well, we want to get rid of what Stephen Harper did was provide red carpet for anyone immigrating to Canada who has over a million dollars to plunk down. Well, what's happening is it's encouraging people to come and throw money at big units that they, and expensive, driving up the price everywhere. They're actually not living in them. Do we need to tax? If we you're need, first of all, we should cancel this program to encourage people to have a red carpet just to throw, to put plunk money down but not move here. And we need to look at all the tools that are available with federal jurisdiction, provincial jurisdiction, and of course another big priority is First Nations housing. And that's uh, so we look at it as three pieces to the to the housing piece. You need a national housing policy, which we currently don't have, that deals with poverty. We want to eliminate poverty overall as Greens with a guaranteed livable income for all, and provide the housing that people can afford in, in a social housing context. Then we need to deal with market housing. How do we get the prices to where Canadians, particularly young families, people dealing with? Oh, we have another program I haven't announced yet on dealing with student debt. But you look at young families, student debt. 
trying to figure out how to get a start in life and housing just out of their reach. And then First Nations, Métis and Inuit housing. These are three different places on a continuum. Seniors housing is another place where in that slurve. How do we ensure as we're an aging society that we can age in place, be in our own homes? I'm 61. I'm the oldest leader, so I have a particular interest in seniors housing. But these are all different solutions. One size won't fit all. But if you have a national housing strategy where we work together, federal government, provincial government, municipal government, First Nations governments, and put the money behind the plan, we will have no reason in this country to have anyone living without affordable, adequate housing, because it is a matter of human dignity. And the, the big question with this and hearing this, and I know you're going to lay out details of how you price out the platform, yeah. is Paul Martin from the Liberals yesterday also you know, releases the comment that if you want to grow your economy, you need to invest in it. How would you diversify the Canadian economy to achieve objectives like you just mentioned? Well, you know, Stephen Harper has put, uh, put in place a strategy that failed, and it was obvious it was going to fail, because a diversified economy is always more resilient than, than trying to put all your eggs in one basket. He did that with the oil sands, although, thank goodness, the oil sands are a very small part of our overall GDP. A lot of Canadians don't know that the oil sands are still only 2% of GDP. They were 2% of GDP before the price of a barrel of oil began to fall. In putting our money in the oil sands, we allowed the price of our dollar to go up so that our dollar was at par with the U.S. dollar. That hit hard manufacturing. We lost 400,000 jobs in manufacturing, pulp and paper, tourism. There are sectors in our economy that can now benefit from that lower dollar. We should be ensuring that we re reinvest in our manufacturing sector, help tourism get really jump-started, because that employs a lot of people, do a lot with pulp and paper. And the next piece is the clean tech, the renewables. There's a whole revenue Revolution with new jobs, new technologies. Canada needs to catch up with the rest of the world. But our proposal to have an army of carpenters and electricians and contractors to go out right away and take every building in Canada and bring it up to snuff so it's no longer wasting money. You know, you know how much it costs if you have a leaky building. You're spending money heating the outdoors in the winter, cooling the outdoors in the summer. I mean, no one wants to do that. So we can actually stimulate the economy, avoid a recession get Canadians back to work and do it while fighting climate change and do it with sensible policies and there's no excuse for sitting back as Harper is doing now and saying oh we need austerity. Well the, the policies are plenty and you know there's lots to be heard over the next few weeks. We thank you for coming on the BT Couch and sharing some of the ideas behind the Green Party. We will be watching and we know the debates will continue so. Uh, and thanks to City TV and, and the network for bringing the McLean's debate out. That was an important huge dialogue. help. Thank you so much.